How are you doing today, Danny? I am swell. How about yourself? Absolutely fantastic. I'm so excited to talk with you because even yesterday, I'm sitting with a 19-year-old and who's got an opinion about an opinion about an <laughs> opinion, and it's like it's like people need to read your book to refocus what is actuality versus an opinion. Well, thank you. That that uh, that was uh, my goal. It's it's about a man that we we I think it's a black and white photo that we've all seen and drawn our own conclusions with. And you have gone into to find out who this man is, was, and what how it affected American history. That, yeah, well, I I wanted to do that. The spoiler alert: I do not solve the case. Okay, I don't claim <laughs> to be smarter than the ten thousand other people who've written about the Kennedy assassination. I was, for numerous reasons, I was fascinated with Jack Ruby. And it's funny you mentioned the picture. It's a famous, there are two famous pictures. Um, one won the Pulitzer because it's the actual moment of him shooting. The other is just a second before, which is a very fa- interesting picture too. But here's the most famous thing this guy ever did. And the guy who was desperate for fame and his back is to the camera. You can't see his face. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, but yes, my goal was to try to shed some light on who this guy was and how his actions, you know, we know how his actions affected history. And I go into that, of course. Um, but what was it like to be Jack Ruby's brother or sister? What was it like to be Jack Ruby's niece or nephew? What was it like to be Jack Ruby's rabbi? And, you know, that that guy I spoke to, he, he was a guy named Hillel Silverman. Yeah. He was the father of the actor Jonathan Silverman. And he gave me access to the many notes he made during his multiple visits to Ruby in prison, and and which gave me a, a unique point of view and a perspective on the whole situation. Yeah, I'm so jealous that you got to spend some time with with the Rabbi Silverman, and the reason why is because that that's as close as you can get to a human soul when you go into that prison. If he could get him to talk, was he able to do it easily, or did he have to develop some sort of relationship with him based on trust and faith? You couldn't shut Jack Ruby up. Really? Jack Ruby spent three years talking to anybody and everybody who would listen. He contradicted himself. His mood changed. His 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 uh, his description of his motivations and and his state of mind was constantly shifting. But unlike Oswald, who um, you know, we all we heard was some scattered um, things. Most famously, "I'm a Patsy" when mm-hmm. when he was brought before the press. For some reason, there was no working tape recorder at the Dallas Police Department those two days. Jack Ruby wouldn't shut up. He talked to his jailers. He talked to his lawyers. He talked to the opposing lawyers. He talked to all these psychiatrists who visited him. He would have impromptu press conferences, even though his lawyers didn't allow him to take the stand during his trial. uh, He had impromptu news conferences at breaks in the trial where he would Talk to talk to the press, and and anybody. I mean the, you know, sort of something that uh, kind of argues against the conspiracy. I think, although not definitively, because there's no there's no definitive thing in, in this. But it's the fact that anybody could have gotten close to him and and plugged him if they wanted to. There was the security was very lax, and as I say, so he, um, you know, I think the things he said to the rabbi were maybe more intimate, more spiritual. Uh, but they often didn't make a lot of sense, you know. Um, but boy, you this there's there's you know, and then of course there's his Warren Commission testimony, which is colorful and in its own way almost yeah. brilliant and Shakespearean, and mm-hmm. and to my mind ultimately um, uh, gibberish. Although people are eager to read all sorts of um, uh, implied. Um, things he was saying into it um so yeah it was that's part of the fascinating thing about him is just how accessible he was and and how and 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 uh he used to go he used to say to people i'm colorful ain't i i'm a character ain't i <laughs> and certainly, you know and he, went, he did go on to prove that <laughs> One of the things that I, I've heard conversations with with the FBI and President Johnson, and they didn't want to involve the FBI or the CIA somehow, some way into this. And yet later in the years, the mob connected to the FBI and CIA is right there in front of us. But they didn't really talk about that in the in the Warren Commission. You know, there's a lot they didn't talk about. You know, the Warren Commission is what it is, right? Yeah. They have, there's a lot of stuff that that um, that for numerous reasons you know, take your pick, was not discussed. 
Um, but I, you know, for all that it's easy to um, to uh, to denigrate the um, Warren Commission, nonetheless, it's 888 pages and 26 volumes of evidence, plus all the stuff that's come out. You know, the millions of documents that have come out in the intervening years. You know, I think I think what people do forget, including me, until I really started researching and thinking about it, the the both murders took place. Uh, about a year after the Cuban Missile Crisis, so there's the wait, height yep, of the Cold yep, War. Yep, yep, yep. And I, and I think there was this, if you know, I think the big fear really was if you know, especially given Oswald's, um, you know, living in Russia and his attempts to get into Cuba, if it was somehow uh, Soviet related, it could be the beginning of World War III. Yep. And and I, you know, and and I think I think certainly Johnson. You know, unless you're of the school that believes that Johnson was the guy who did it, you know, which there is a school of thought uh, on that. I think it's unlikely. But again, um, it seems like a very remote possibility. But but to give him some credit, you can you can say the guy was trying to not have World War Three start on his watch. Wow. You know, until I got your book, I didn't realize that that Jack Ruby had two different personalities or he was two different people. I was I was just once again, I I, I judged uh, history by what I found in, in, in newspaper magazines and things like that. Um, but but you you really give us that that identity of, of being two different people. I think two would be mild. I think there were probably <laughs> you know, 20 different Jack Rubies. Yeah, you know, the book is called The Many Faces of Jack yes, Ruby. And yes. Because. You know, I mean, here's a guy who um, people would come to visit him and he would hide under a table because he would say, I, through my actions, I've brought like shame on my fellow Jews and I've started the second Holocaust and and Jews are being tortured and killed in this prison. I can hear their screams. Mm. So that was one Jack Ruby, very you know, almost actively crazy, unless he was acting, which would have made him the world's greatest actor. Right. Um, then a minute later, he'd say like, hey, you want to play cards? And then, and you know, then he could be shut down and, 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 uh, and unresponsive and crying. And then you read about his Warren Commission testimony where he literally took over the room as, you know, I, I, the way I put it is he treated the the lawyers and the guards and the and the police in the room and 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 Earl Warren himself, as if they were busboys at his nightclub. Mm. I mean, it, so he could be intimidating. Like, I mean, it's to read accounts of that, and like here are these. Uh, I'm thinking especially of Gerald Ford, who, if you remember, how he was yes. built. He had yes. a background as a football player. He was built like a football player. So here's Ruby, like ordering these people around as if they were his staff. It's you know, but then you do have to remember that whatever multiple kinds of personalities he displayed, he was the guy who walked up in a room full of police and shot Lee Harvey Oswald at point blank range and killed him. So, wow. you know, you can't, you know, that that was part of him too. Wow, you've got to come back to this show anytime in the future, Danny. I love how you build a story and you keep me so so connected to your paragraphs. Oh, well, thank you. That's, you know, obviously every writer uh, longs to hear that. So you've made my day. Well, you be brilliant today. Okay, sir. You too. <laughs>